Hey again. I guess I will need to try and keep this weekly thing. If I can, um, but I'm a day late and anyone that knows me, I hate being late for anything at all. I hate not knowing when things are happening or not happening or all of a sudden they're happening. Um, just not good at that kind of interruption. Um, last week we talked about my journey to diagnosis, which was, <sighs> I think, a pertinent way to start. Um, because it is still a big issue for women out there, women and girls, to get their diagnosis so that they can get the assistance that they need. And if anything in the last week in Scotland has shown us with the, the scandal around this year's exams programme, I think it demonstrates that the more you know and the more you know yourself, the more power that you have to go and appeal and stand up to the government to make the change happen. That, that has happened, thankfully, now. Um, my heart would have exploded if I had been in those circumstances. So I suppose, given it was exam results week, just about everywhere, I think, I think A-levels came out too. I thought I'd talk about school and education and how that worked for me. Um, I always loved school. Not the friends bit, that didn't go so good. Um, but I loved every second I spent with my teachers. It was wonderful. Um, I had amazing teachers growing up. And to name all of them would be nuts. <laughs> um, Mrs. Mackay. Andersons, Miss Wood at Four Hill, you guys, you actually really, really helped me through a lot, even though I was very young when you guys taught me. I was in primaries one and th three to six or so. Uh, Miss Ald at Bulmedi, she was incredible. I loved her to pieces. She was absolutely brilliant. We actually got to do um, a project uh, for primary seven and she hadn't, or she had the topic, but she wasn't sure about it that we were going to do. Because that's the way a lot of things work in Scotland. We learn by doing projects together as a group, individually, um, doing research and all that kind of stuff, you know. And she wanted to do it on a book. And sorry, harvest flies. And I said, let's do the Hobbit. And sure enough, next uh, term, the last term at Balmedy, we got to do the Hobbit. I was pretty chuffed. And it wasn't just that, she was just really giving and patient and understanding of me. Because I actually started, if, because I was thinking about this before I hit record, believe it or not. Um, I actually think she spotted a little bit of, of the autism with me because there were a few times where I had meltdowns and it was around being told time was up but with me not realising it on something or other people not being quick enough. Um, she usually found something else for me to do. Um, I do remember being sent on a timeout once to the li to the library, which to me was absolutely fine because it was the library. <laughs> That's not a punishment for me. I taught myself to read, man, before I went to school. I was I read The Hobbit by myself for the first time because um, Dad used to read. No, it was first. It was James the Giant Peach, and Mum wasn't going fast enough at bedtime or doing enough or telling enough of it at bedtime. Uh, and I just couldn't, I couldn't wait. I was just like, this is stupid. Um, so I arrived at school kind of precocious as it was. So those teachers at primary school were, were just incredible in that they saw me. 
they recognized that I had something kind of quirky, kind of weird, kind of sensitive. Um, but I felt seen and looked after and it, they were absolutely brilliant. The bits where I struggled was maths. Maths has always been my enemy. I still to this day have no idea how I passed standard grade maths. I went for absolutely zero, like no grade whatsoever, guys. No grade. No grade. That would be the equivalent of the national what's it now. And no one expected me to do anything, but they kept me in the credit class at secondary school. <laughs> Because I was in credit, everything else, and that would mess up, you know, me, allegedly. Because surely, being a credit student, you can do maths. No. No. <laughs> I learnt all my music by ear. I never learnt how to count time signatures. I'm sorry, Miss Wood. Um, second Miss Wood, who taught me how to sing. And Miss Marshall, who I'm... Not sure she's with us anymore. Um, she was getting on a bit when we had her for, for music. But um, I managed to come away with the two. A standard grade or national Watsits. I have no idea how. My maths teacher had no idea how. I left the exam early. Like, really early. Like, everyone was still noses down. And I'd, I'd been sat there for ten minutes. I'm like, well, this is as much as I can do. There's no point in me sitting here. I can go away and read a book. Or I can sit here and wait for everyone else. And I decided to go away and read a book. Um, I think it was a good 40 minutes before. Um, the end, at least, if not an hour. I tend to suck things in and absorb information and it just stays there somehow I gather it it's not anything that I can direct so like I'm really bad at memorizing pieces of poetry I'm really bad at remembering dates or statistics because again numbers of the enemy but for some reason I can tell you I, I can sit through something like pointless or a game show and have people telling me to shut up because I'm beating everyone to the answer <laughs> and they're getting pissed because it's not fun to watch a quiz with me apparently. <laughs> but not any of that is it of any use to your education. Um, some of it with English, it was applied knowledge because I read like a, a crazy person. I read, a, I read, I still read a lot. I usually have five or six books on the go at the time. I have a book in each room in my house and a book in my bag and I've usually got a Kindle on me as well so that if I get distracted and I need to do something else I can try Kindle for a little bit to see what's got. <sighs> Secondary school was rough because of the bullying. I got bullied every single year of my time in school which is why I love my time in class with the teachers. Um... Secondary school, my superstars were Mrs. McWilliam, my modern studies teacher, um, Mrs. Fetis, my German teacher, and uh, Mr. Haggerty, who I believe is, is, is now head teacher or something like that at my old school, which is awesome. So cool. Uh, I'm sure they're doing so great under him because he was such a great teacher. But a lot of it was me being picked on for being different. And it wasn't like I was trying to be different. I just liked different things from other people. Um, I liked different music, different books, different everything. I still remember with the whole friends kind of side of things. I had a group of friends that I hung out with, but um, I always ended up with me being kind of left out because I lived in a village and I would stress out about getting home. So I was much happier coming home and reading 
or going to the movies with my cousin or just coming home walking my dog and then watching Buffy um so I didn't tend to get invited so I'd arrive on a Monday morning and they'd be all blethering about uh sorry talking about um wherever or whatever they'd been up to at the weekend and I wasn't invited so I spent tended to spend a lot of time in in silence unfortunately like we used to go to the movies for everyone's birthday and that meant that I had to see a lot of um Richard Curtis movies, Adam Sandler movies. I got to pick once, I think. Yeah, uh, for my birthday. And I picked Old Brother Where Art Thou. <laughs> okay, so that's a double fail for those guys because that was uh, classics and the Coen brothers in, in a double hitter and a good long run time of like three hours. <laughs> Didn't go down so well. Um, so I didn't get to pick again. It was mostly Adam Sandler or Richard Curtis. I don't like Richard Curtis. I don't like Adam Sandler. So I had friends, but I was still bullied. Even kids in younger years used to pick on me. And even when I was a prefix, like, no one would listen to me. And I was so extremely clumsy, so I would fall down, uh, usually spilling my lunch on the way in. I got laughed at an awful lot. And I went out and I tried for things. I did stuff. Um, I did Young Enterprise. That was fun. Uh, but I turned into the stress monster for that. I did a magazine where I interviewed some bands, but I disappeared off with my cousin to go and see uh, The Fellowship of Lord of the Rings instead of being there and final kind of put it to bed day. In my defense, my mother let me, so. <laughs> but grades always just came without very much in the way of studying. The only exams I've ever studied for, I think, was the human geography because that was just bothering me because I, I love I, I'm a politics nerd, international development nerd. I, I, I live for that kind of stuff, campaigning for uh, water right and women's rights, human rights around the world and um, make, looking at famine and looking at disease and everything. And that's what that was all about. And it just annoyed me. So I studied it so I could try and get a better grade and my driving test. My theory test. Um, I got 100% in my theory test. <laughs> so um, I'm sure there's a lot of teachers that, that wonder what would have happened if I'd actually, you know, study studied. But it just always came to me naturally. And then I, I got all on conditionals for university. Um, up and down the country, all the ancients I got a spot at. So that's Aberdeen, Edinburgh, Glasgow, St Andrews, um, and actual Glasgow. Um, it didn't go so good. Um, it got to a point where there was a subject that I really, really hated that came up and it was Austin and Dickens and those are two authors that make me angry. Mention those authors to me in person. I will scream and I will shout and you will be privy to one of the longest rants you've had in the history of anything to do with books. Um, and I wasn't doing so good. Um, by this point, my mental health had gone completely down the toilet. And no one told me that me hiding and only going to film meant that I wouldn't be able to continue and do honours. I didn't know. So I ended up with this ordinary degree. I love film and TV. It was amazing. Um, but it didn't work out that way. But again, I'd, I'd, I'd never really studied for anything. 
and that I think that's that was my problem I never because that was just the way exams went for me I never really needed to so I didn't build that habit in and I think that's where I went wrong because I never had to put in the effort before and I just didn't give a crap about maths or PE. I just, you know, got on my merry way and just got on with it. Um, I always got good report cards. Um, always. So m if mom could make it to the uh, parents' day for me, it wasn't that much of a fuss because all they were going to get was like singing praise because <laughs> teachers liked me. And I liked them. I adored them. Each and every one of them. Um, so learning is something that I do. It just happens. I don't know what I'm doing. It's like I learn by osmosis. I'll come up with all kinds of random facts on pub quizzes or like say watching quiz shows on TV. Exams? They never really stressed me out. Ever. No. I just did them. I they were just I I I just accepted that that was something that had to happen, so I did it. For good or for ill. So it'll be really interesting now to see what happens with me picking up again and doing micro degrees at Glasgow. Um, which I th I don't know if that started yet. I haven't got an email, so I need to check. So, really, if you've had your exams re results come this week, I know it's it's the last couple of weeks have been hellish for you, and I hope you're okay. Try to be kind to yourself, and remember, it's their mistake. It's not yours. And they've apologised for it. And I hope it's all being corrected. If it isn't, do something about it. Don't just sit in silence and, and let some idiot's judgement bring your grade line down. Your teacher knows you, how you learn, what you learned, and how well you demonstrated that learning. Not a government that doesn't know how to do an education board and I mean especially going by what the school did in the past that's got nothing to do with any child that's all people before them and each year is full of a myriad of different kids and different levels of and different skills and different specialisms and different interests and that's what makes each year at school um so wonderful for the teachers because if they are teaching set years then they they see those personalities evolve and those people become people it's really cool um i like that part of teaching getting to know the kids i did go on to teach training i didn't complete uh, again, I had a bit of a, a mental health difficulty there and I lost someone rather important and it made me reassess things. But take a deep breath. You're still there here. You don't need to know what you want to do right away. If you do, great. Awesome. Go for it. You'll be amazing. Why not? And if you're feeling down on yourself, feel that. You're allowed to feel that. They hurt you. Badly. And that's in no way fair, just, or anything that should have happened to you. So just to finish up, taking my inspiration from
from Jimmy Jacobs. Let's finish up with a little bit of gratitude. It's been another tough week. I am exhausted and another week is coming. I'm still on heavy medication. There's a lot going on and I don't know what's going to happen and as I said at the start, it's not a good situation for me. But I am grateful for my friends still. I am grateful for all of those of you that kept me in your thoughts, for the people that are fighting for me right now, that will continue to fight for and with me. I am grateful for my home, my relative health. Apart from this thing, this thing needs to go. Let's just get the pizza car. It'll be fine. I'm grateful for my family, for looking out for me. Um, I'm grateful for the food in my fridge, the clothes on my back, the fact that I have not only a bed to sleep in, but a bed to spare so I could help out my brother. And... I hope that this week is better. That's all I can hope for. Yeah, I just hope it's better. And if you've had a rough week, I hope it's better for you. Um, it did see me get my new Biffy album, which is beautiful and is a superb album, so Celebration of Endings is absolutely superb. But so is James Dean Bradfield's second solo album. Um, absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. So get on to those if you haven't already. And if you aren't tuned in for the um, the celebration of a celebration of endings last night. You missed something special. It was fantastic. Um, I don't even know if you can play it back. Maybe they will release it as a DVD. Um, but I'm on the biff. But yeah. Peace. Sleep and if all else fails, get yourself an ice bowl because it's boiling hot and I am so so sweaty. <laughs> Maybe it's hot. So I shall bid you goodbye, good night. Good luck and may we all be here still kicking, still fighting, still moving. And be here next week. I will try to be a little bit less waffly, I promise. But thank you, this was all explaining. Part two. I did two. That's a good thing. Have a good week. If you aren't, reach out. I'm right there with you. And if you've got any questions for me for next week, then just pop them in the comments. Good night and good luck. <laughs>